Hey there, Cosmic Cats. Welcome back to Musicland Stories, the origin point for all music and adventure stories in the known universe, and some of the unknown ones. And we're here at the Musicland Concert Hall. Your friend, the conductor, is back on broadcast. But I've got to start out today by asking you a favor. Can you keep it quiet? Like, real soft. I'll explain in just a minute, but for the safety of all parties involved, we just need to stay very quiet. Sometimes the quiet parts of a song are the most important. They get you to lean in a little bit, to come a little closer. Pianissimo, we sometimes say in the conducting biz. Or sotto voce. It helps to speak a little Italian in my line of work. Giuseppe Verde taught me to parlare italiano backstage at La Scala in 1834. But we're not here to talk about that. Where is here? That is an excellent question. And it brings me back to why we need to be quiet for a moment. You might remember that our friend Mo and her new friend Twilo had gotten the legendary drumsticks of Krupa Khan back from the clutches of, well, me. But it had come too late for Mo to meet back up with the Orchestra Obscura back on her home planet, Syncopia, and take her rightful place as their new drummer. Lucky for them, I had a plan for Mo and Twilo to find the orchestra on their interstellar concert tour. Mo and Twilo had just stepped through the portal for parts unknown. She's a brave one, our Mo, but I'm glad she's bringing a friend along. As for their current location, Mo and Twilo are at the very outer edge of the planet Sachidananda. It's a fun name to try to say. Try it out, but quietly, okay? Sachidananda. I say they're on the outer edge because, you see, Sachidananda is perfectly flat. Once upon a time, people thought the Earth was flat. Some people still do, despite, you know, science. But Sachidananda is, in fact, a flat planet. And the reason we need to be quiet while we're here is that a loud noise might cause the whole thing to wobble and tip, which would dump Mo and Twilo into space, which is no place to be. Standing on the edge of the planet, Mo was able to look over the rim into a vast sea of stars. There's a reason they call it space, you know? A lot of it is empty, but just like the quiet parts of a song can be important, the space in between notes is critical. Sometimes you need to wait a beat before you hit big. Feeling a little dizzy looking at all that space, Mo turned around to survey Sachidananda. There wasn't a whole lot to see. When I say the planet was flat, I mean it was flat. The only thing that stood out to Mo was that at the very center of the planet, there was a column of light shining up from the ground. It was like all the light from all the stars was pouring through a hole in the middle of the planet. Well, she said to Twilo, I guess that's where we've got to go. Mo and Twilo took their first steps toward the center of Sachidananda, and no sooner had they done it than their faces were smushed up against an invisible wall. Like a window without a spot on it. As they felt around, it became clear that the wall ran in both directions, keeping them from making a beeline to the column of light at the center of the planet. They started walking along the wall, trailing their hands along to see if maybe there was a break a more direct path through. But nope. They kept walking along the edge of the planet, an invisible wall on one side, and a drop into the vast nothingness of space on the other. They walked until they'd made one full rotation of the entire planet of Sachidananda and came back to where they started. Only now, they were a little further from the edge, a little closer to the middle. It's a spiral path. Mo realized. One long path that goes round and round and then arrives at the middle. For the record, they didn't have record albums on Mo's home planet of Syncopia. 
So there was no way for Mo to know that she was embarking on the longest groove in the galaxy, the grand spiral scratch of Sachidananda. It's a pilgrimage, you see? A long, quiet walk with nothing to look at. Up until now, Mo had a lot of noise in her life. The cacophony of her home planet, the wild oscillations of Professor Pandemonium and his cosmic crew, the dance beats of Transalor. Now, walking the spiral scratch, she could hear her own heartbeats again. Even though she was a million miles away from where she came from, Mo felt herself returning to herself. She felt at home. Walking next to her, Twilo started to hum a little song. Then he sang little nonsense words that slowly took the form of lyrics. The song didn't have a structure, no verse, chorus, verse. It was a meandering thing. Because you see, Twilo was just as odd on his planet as Mo was on hers. Everyone on Transalore, where he came from, was all about the beats. But Twilo's head was full of tunes. Not tunes you dance to, necessarily. Just little ditties and jingles. Snippets of melody. Because Transalorians treasured beats, Twilo never shared his songs with anyone. But now he shared them with Mo. They were like a third friend walking the spiral scratch along with Twilo and Mo, moving gradually toward the center and the column of light. As they walked, Mo began to tease out the rhythm in Twilo's song. She started by tapping her thumb ever so quietly on the side of her leg. But soon she was drumming out a beat with her hands on her thighs. Twilo picked up the beat and his song became more focused. The rambling lines turned into verses and one particularly good snippet became a chorus with a hook. Hey, hey Mo, hey, hey Mo. Like something summoned out of the sea, the song rose up until it was such a solid jam that Mo and Twilo stopped noticing how long their spiral journey was. Before they knew it, they'd arrived at the center of Sachidananda, the column of light, and the strangest being they'd seen so far on their journey, who happens to be one of my oldest and dearest friends. Her name is Shiva Loka, and she is the bastion of balance. She sat cross-legged on a bright orange platform that floated just above Mo's head. She wore a billowing white dress printed with flowers from over a dozen planets. And from under the hem of the dress protruded not two, but six slender spidery legs. All of them crossed so they formed an intricate design, a collection of odd angles. Her arms were strong arms, because sometimes maintaining balance takes patience, and sometimes it requires strength. These were arms that could hoist a whole harp overhead if the situation called for it. Right this minute, they held a scale, dangling by a chain pinched between Shiva Loka's fingers. And her face? Shiva Loka had two rows of four shining eyes, each one shining like a gemstone lit up by the brilliance of Shiva Loka's luminous brain. And she had a smile that, if you were to see that smile on the saddest, roughest day of your life, it would look like a new day about to dawn. It would look like the prospect and the promise that everything would be all right. Shiva Loka smiled that smile at Mo and Twilo. Hello, little ones, she said. You've walked the grand spiral scratch of Sachidananda, a path very few choose to partake. Along that path, there's nothing to hear but the sound of yourself. 
There's nothing to find that hasn't been inside you all along. So, travelers of the Grand Spiral Scratch, can you share with me what you found? Mo and Twilo looked at one another. In its earliest stages, a song is like a secret. You keep it to yourself because it seems so delicate that if you let it out into the world, it might pop like a soap bubble. Then, if you're brave enough, you share it with one person and they add something to it, a harmony or a guitar riff or a beat, and the song gets stronger. Maybe the two of you share it with a third or a fourth and each of them add something. Maybe you share it with an entire orchestra until the song that was once like a soap bubble is now like a whole planet. Mo and Twilo's song was still new, still a delicate thing, but they were brave and they had faith in their song. Mo began with the beat and Twilo started to sing. And in the space between them and Shiva Loka, the song took shape. It was a bright glowing globe and it floated towards Shiva Loka and came to rest on one side of her scale. Shiva Loka reached her other hand into the billowing folds of her dress and pulled out a brightly shining feather, which she placed on the other side of the scale. The scale tipped left and right, left and right. But the tips were a little less wild each time. And after a few moments, the scale came into perfect balance. Shiva Loka smiled her brand new day smile. Travelers, she said. You have found what you needed to find on your journey on the Grand Spiral Scratch. You have much farther to go, but you are well on your way, and I can help you along the path. With that, Shiva Loka set down the scale and rose up on all six of her legs. Her hands made slow movements in the air like she was stroking the strings of a harp. From the hole, the center of the planet where the light poured through, there rose up a spaceship made of blue silver with the light of a million stars reflected on its surface. It slowly lowered and came to rest next to Mo and Twilo. This is a Stella by Starlight. I just call her Stella. The ship will take you to the Orchestra Obscura, said Shiva Loka. Although, as you've learned, not every path is a straight line. But if you believe in the journey, and if you have faith in the song, you'll get to your destination. She waved her hand, and Stella's hatch popped open to let Mo and Twilo climb aboard. On the ship's dashboard, there was a great galactic map. At one corner, there was a blinking dot labeled where you're at. And at the far corner, a galaxy away, was another blinking dot labeled where you're going. Mo pressed that second dot and the hatch hissed closed, sealing up airtight. Stella's engines rumbled and then in a flash, Mo and Twilo blasted off. And if Sacha Dinanda wobbled a little bit when they did, Shiva Loka didn't seem to mind. She knew that in time, all things find their balance. Speaking of time, Cosmic Cats, ours is up. We're going to leave Mo and Twilo shooting through the sea of stars, blasting through infinite possibilities. But we'll find them next time, unless someone else finds them first. Musicland Stories is a collaboration between Starglow Media and Double Elvis. Executive producers from Double Elvis are Jake Brennan and Brady Sattler. Executive producers from Starglow Media are Jed Baker and Agarenish A. Palmer. This episode of Musicland Stories was written by Bob Prohl. Alessandro Santoro is our showrunner. Narration by me, Nikki Lynette. Original score by Jonathan Warman. Story editing by Zef Lundy. And episode mix by Colin Fleming. Grown-ups, 
You can find more ad-free fun for the whole family by subscribing to Star Glow Plus on Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. See you soon, Cosmic Cats. Until next time, Conductor out.